Wait, just, I have a stupid joke. I can edit everything out. Don't if edit we're, this out. If the three of us will not admit to being the host and we are the ghosts, does that make Tanner the ghost? By default? Because he's a guest, but he's a... I like it. It rhymes with, thank you. Thank you, I've always her. <laughs> that's that's my life ambition is to be a ghost so yeah mine and yours Perfect. both josh where's that fake laugh from earlier <laughs> perfect thank you no problem <laughs> Welcome to Born Under Punches. I'm your not host, Josh. My worst Valentine's Day story is probably, good lord, like five or six years ago now, because time moves ever forward in a terrifying manner. And uh, I'd been seeing a uh, friend of a friend who had set me up on a date, and we had a really nice Valentine's Day brunch at a place that doesn't exist anymore and I can't remember the name of, but had good fries. Can remember that. And where the tragedy comes in is about halfway through the date, I realized I probably wasn't going to see this person again. And I had no way to extract myself nicely from that because it was oh. Valentine's Day. Oh no. Which is why I don't do Valentine's Day dates anymore. <laughs> For a first date? Yeah, that's probably yeah. fair. Well, it wasn't the first date. It was like the second date. Oh, okay. And then uh, I think being the very bad person I am, the next day when we were supposed to hang out again, I went out. And I got a nice haircut to psych myself up and then got to the place where we were supposed to hang out, told her that maybe we should see other people and uh, went on my very fresh way. Wait, so you knew you were going to break up with the girl. So I you went out and you got hotter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you broke up with her. <laughs> yeah, that's what I Good, did. good, cool. Excellent. Yeah, you Ice see this? cold. See what you're going to be missing? Oh. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> so, in the nature of patterns, which I am fond of, let's go counterclockwise to uh, Tanner. I had to think about that for too long, um, <laughs> about which way that was going. Well, I am Tanner. I'm very happy to be back on Born Under Punches with my Canadian friends in the computer. Um, I am the hot take infibulator of the podcast. <laughs> or not? This isn't a podcast, is it? This is a, what do you call this you thing? Said the, you said the cursed word. It's yeah. edging ever uh, closer and closer to being a podcast, and... <laughs> Uh, I like to think of it as like, you know, like when the line is like approaching zero, but never becomes zero. This, this media endeavor mm -hmm. that yeah. we are engaged in. Kelly, um, I thought we told you you're not allowed to talk about edging on the show anymore. Well, that, but that's before we changed the format. I figured it, all the <laughs> rules reset. Um, talking about Valentine's day. Um, I've been pretty good at Valentine's day recently, especially with my, my wife. We, we do a pretty good job, but uh, it's Valentine's Day. The year is, I think, 2011, 2010 or 2011. I'm dating my girlfriend uh, in college, and she she was uh, she, she she had a little bit of money. She was a little little bit of a rich girl um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and she she acted like it. And so it gets to Valentine's Day and she just, you know, she asked she assumed we were going to go somewhere and she asked me she's like oh so like where are we going for valentine's day and i thought about it i was like you know what i have no idea and this is like the day before so i know i'm not going to get a, a a reservation anywhere in madison and so like it comes down to it and i tell her like oh like i didn't make a reservation but we can just go out and see like who has availability on valentine's day so we end up uh settling on applebee's um, for our Valentine's Day dinner. So we go to Applebee's and the wait's like two hours and oh. 
So oh, disappointing. I, Applebee's is great. Not waiting two hours for it. Um, so uh, my next suggestion is, hey, what about Perkins? Um, are you familiar with Perkins at all? No, no, I don't know. No, not a, not a thing up there. Um, <clears throat> you're missing out because Perkins is great. Um, however, it's about the it's about the food quality of like a like a little better than like a Waffle House. Or like, I don't know, maybe like a Tim Hortons. That's okay. fair. Um, and so that's where we had Valentine's Day dinner was at Perkins. And my girlfriend was very, very upset. Um, was not happy. A uh, a nice, fancy girl like her should not be spending Valentine's Day in a Perkins. Um, it, we ended up having having a big fight that night because I didn't respect her enough to plan ahead for Valentine's Day. So... That was probably my worst Valentine's Day experience. Oh, yeah. Sorry, man. It was so all right. What? She was she was a huge bitch, so that's <laughs> fine. I wasn't I, getting that at all. Yeah, I do get. I do feel like if you, I don't know. I have those I have personal feelings about Valentine's Day and whether or not it should be made, made a big deal of. Um, mm-hmm. Generally, I would say no. Um, yep. But, we um yeah. currently we. We we don't really we're not really going out to eat people, but uh, going out to eat <laughs> the types of people. I see. Uh-huh. Um, Good to hear. Good to hear. If we if we did that, I wouldn't admit that here. Um, but we do something <laughs> simple. We just buy each other like a book for Valentine's Day. That's like our thing, and it's very. That sweet, sounds like a good one to me. It's it's perfect. That is the most romantic of all gifts. All right, continuing on. I guess we are to Nicole. So I did, um, I guess as a preface to anyone who's watching this later, I did like ask the the team if they were going to be ready for the absolute bleakness of this. Um, but I had started seeing a guy. Okay. I had, st- I had hooked up with a guy one time um, and it happened to be right before Valentine's Day, um, like two days before. And so he, he asked that we go out for Valentine's Day. We did like a, uh, like just like a dinner at Boston Pizza or something like that. It was like a pretty chill date or whatever. Um, and I'm like being a modern woman and he being in trade school at the time, I was like, I'm making money. You're not. Let me pay for this. Uh, we had a nice evening. Um, well, sort of. <laughs> it was the food was good. Um, I realized also realized halfway through the date that I didn't want to see this guy again. Um, and uh, yeah, I spent the next week and a half periodically every 24 hours breaking up with him. Um, and then he continued to stalk me for three months. So. <laughs> Great. I feel like oh, when yeah. the <laughs> like second breakup attempt fails. Like at a certain point, you're you're the room for trying to continue to break up with them, whereas like, like how did you get him to stop stalking you eventually? Um. Oh, I never told him where I lived because I on the second date had a very well. When we went out for the first time on Valentine's Day, I had some vibes, and I uh, so I blocked him on Facebook and all social media, and I stopped answering my phone, and he never found out where I lived. Yeah, I think that's the move. Like once I think once you have two unsuccessful attempts to break up with someone, it's just like straight to that. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um that is a lesson that you think you would learn the first time, but I have had to do that three separate times with three separate people. See, like the two of you, I should have realized that I didn't want to go on another date with this person <laughs> at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I didn't. So live yeah. and learn. Yeah, fair. I mean, I should have known after the first time hanging out with this guy, but... It's good to know you have a type, though. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Guys that will not go away. It's going to be great if you ever need to get a divorce. <laughs> now, Ryan's the first guy that didn't attempt to stalk me, so... That's so we bro- sweet. We broke up once, and he just said, fuck you, bye. And so I was like, well, I'm in love with you now, so <laughs> I guess we got to get married. It's <laughs> uh, a lesson oh. there, kids. I guess I didn't introduce myself. My, my name is Nicole, for those of you just turning in, and my role is five. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Thank you. That's my joke. 
So I All guess right. we move on to our anchor, don't we, Nicole? Yeah, K Money, bring us home. What do you got? All right. My name is Kelly. I'm the person who makes the show start late. Mm. And I I had all this time and I couldn't think of a Valentine's story because I just don't think I've ever had one. I could, I, there was probably two times I've been in like an uh, identifiable relationship on Valentine's Day. And I think it was always just one of those situations where it's like, like whatever, who cares? Uh, and uh, so, like, yeah, you know, there's that quote about like the opposite of hate isn't love, it's indifference. I think the opposite of having a good Valentine's Day isn't having a bad Valentine's Day. The opposite of having a good Valentine's Day is no Valentine's Day. Oh. Okay. Oh, so Kelly. what you're saying <laughs> is that we need some people to go on some disastrous dates with Kelly on Valentine's Day so that he has some stories in the future. <laughs> yeah, so oh, that's that's what what I feel we're seen. Here. Like, if I have a horrible time, that means I had a time with someone. Well, <laughs> if you do, let me recommend the Patty Melt at Perkins. <laughs> yeah I'll be like it's Valentine's Day I'll do a road trip to Wisconsin mm -hmm. hell yeah well if you need a list of people that will take you out for a horrible date or just go on a horrible date with you I've, I can just send you my list of ex-boyfriends cause boy howdy <laughs> given that our, our plan is now to do a variety of segments to keep things you know like interesting and fresh we're gonna do is if I understand the exact same segment that Tanner did on the show last time well, one of them. Yeah. All right. So that that's, that's the That's fine. That's safe. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so that segment is the question jar and uh this is the theme to the question jar. No context. Just give us a sound bite. Gabriele Denunzio. And you can't say oh, girl. Don't say girl. Oh, I was what? thinking of Gabriele Denunzio. Denunzio. <laughs> a lot of Salvador Dali. Oh, what? Gabriele like Denunzio. Gabriele Denunzio. Why? Another one, Joseph Dali. Told you. Gabriele Denunzio. Oh, you know Alex Jones. Oh, call him. Gabriele uh, Denunzio. What the fuck was that? <laughs> That's the new thing for the question jar. Oh, I'm so happy that you've Featuring. been spending your time doing this. Yeah, I, I, I spent about like five hours making that today. That is worth, <laughs> worth, that is worth starting uh, a half hour late. Yeah, I actually completely agree. That was well worth it. Uh, I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> Uh, well, it was very fortunate because right. I was like, oh, we've only really had the like the fascist question twice. And then I remembered that the the recording we did on Monday, um, we kind of alluded to it. And then we started getting into like, who is the sexiest fascist? And that's kind of. <laughs> is that where the Alex Jones uh, clip came from? Or was that? From that's where one? everything other than uh, Tanner, Josie and Lucas's <laughs> answers came from. Oh, no, Josh's was from that, too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what it was anymore, but I'm sure it'll never be used against me in a court. <laughs> Neat. Well, so if you never do a second. fascism, then you're fine. <laughs> so, We're pretty so safe the, then. Yeah, uh, Nicole, do you want to explain the format of the segment? Uh, yeah. So, format of the segment, we're going to draw a question from the question jar. Um, I believe... Is the, is the rule that you have to answer the question? Or well, is that... That, that was my rule, and then you kind of shot it down, saying, no, you get to withdraw your consent at any time. So Yeah, that's fair. I, I stand by that. Consent is important. Um, yeah, I don't so think we gonna... have any profoundly cursed questions yet, other than the <laughs> our kind of post hoc, <laughs> who's your favorite fascist one? <laughs> other than the <laughs> one that you made our entire thing, question jar theme out of? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, cool. Good. Just checking. <laughs> but he's already answered that one, and I feel like if he gets a duplicate, we'll just yeah, we have to move that on. Pass. Yeah, fair. It's like okay. if, if he gets a do if he gets a duplicate and he can give an equally thorough answer, it's like then we start to have problems here. <laughs> yeah, you can, we're inviting he, on you can keep <laughs> listing these off. I'm gonna start getting worried. <laughs> he's got a new favorite fascist. He's like, I actually just learned about this one. I've been doing some reading since I saw <laughs> uh, He's alive and well. He has a he, he has a page on Telegram. Oh boy, yeah, he's got a PhD from what Canadian <laughs> University. Jesus, <laughs> that's that's honestly the great thing about fascism is there's always new fascists to get into. Mm. In fact, these days there seems to be more and more every day. So like we could just do we would we call that fast fashion? 
fash fashion fash fashion boom fast the fact that it took you multiple tries there i think kind of diluted the joke a little bit that's fine do it again we'll get it clean i'll edit out everything before that no don't you dare would you call that fast fashion can so you do, can here's you what like a little ding with like a, like a little like <laughs> star like I love yeah I, I would love to do more editing that would be really cool <laughs> I know it's your favorite thing I know that's how yeah. you love to spend all your time clearly look at the theme you just made mm-hmm. five hours well spent mm-hmm. no making stuff is fun editing stuff sucks shit there yeah so, can confirm I'm going to pull a little bit of an audible here because so our the original premise was that if the guest answers a question for every question they answer, they get to put a new question in the jar and everyone else answering the same question was kind of incidental since there's no more guests. All my homies hate guests. Everyone is just a co-host. What I'm thinking we could do is we all pull out like let's do four questions. So we'll pull out one for each of us. Uh, we can maybe peer pressure the others into answering, but once you answer your question, that entitles you to add one more to the jar. And this way we'll end up adding four and the jar will get interesting quickly. Okay. That sounds good to me. All right. So should we go in the same order we just introduced ourselves in or? Yeah, sure. I might as well open us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do that There's right that ASMR camera. for the crowd there. Shake that jar till the white stuff comes out. White stuff being paper. <laughs> That's my joke. Moving on. Moving on. Hey, we could put the questions on the on the dice cam. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I'll... Uh, I can't remember which one it is here. We have too many. There it is. Aha. I can remember how to do production. Oh Is boy, we can't read that at all. <laughs> no. Mission fucking accomplished. All right, what does it mean? Just, yeah. All right, Josh, here's your question. All right. Would you rather do burps that sound like farts or farts that sound like the noise Tim Mallon makes at the start of Home Improvement? Oh, 100% <laughs> the latter. Like if I'm just sitting there like uh? trying to do like a silent fart in like an elevator or something, you just hear... <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make my fucking day. As the rest of the passengers all gag and die, I'll be killing myself laughing. Yeah, no, 100% the latter. I want my farts to sound like that Tim Allen noise. I think that's the uh, I think that's a safer option because you could always just blame Tim Allen. Yeah, but like, uh, and like honestly, he's kind did, of a piece did, of shit. Did anyone so. else see Tim Allen? Just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'd be like, <laughs> fucking Tim Allen again? God yeah. damn it. First, he's fucking weirdly Republican, and actually not weirdly. I can totally have seen that coming a mile away. And now he's fucking stinking up elevators. What do you think he's going to come out with a podcast called, like, Country Improvement? Or um, no, no, it's got to be something. <laughs> house house Improvement. Gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a, it's like a podcast on, um, like, uh, not Senate, uh, Rep- House of Representatives reform, and he calls yeah, it Yeah, he does not care about the Senate. He doesn't, no, 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 no comments the about the Senate at all. Just House of Representatives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's a pure. Tim Allen is my favorite fascist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Well, I think that's that question answered then. God love. Wait, me. which one did you pick? You wanted the farts. I wanted the farts to sound like Tim Allen. Yeah, like come on. Okay. I feel like that's a gimme. Yeah, I, I guess you're big on like putting people on the back foot and like. Oh yeah, completely Not making people uncomfortable. Comfortable. Yeah. Does it come fair. with all the tool noises as well that the song <laughs> came with? Yeah, like the like the I'm thinking actually the red green duct tape sound, which is oh, way better. Yeah, that would be a good fart. That'd noise. be a good fart noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that might unfortunately be lost on any American listeners, but you know, yeah, I, I don't awesome. guess. I've probably only watched like two episodes of Home Improvement in my whole life. Um, but I do remember as a kid renting uh, from Blockbuster the Super Nintendo Home Improvement game. I know. We, I didn't I know, know we, that was what? a thing. We there sang was a some. Home yeah, game? there was. Yeah, and like the tools were like his weapons. I don't remember much about it. I was a small, small child at the time. Um, but yeah, there was totally a video <laughs> game of of Home Improvement. Oh my god, I hate that so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I watched a lot of Home Improvement as a kid because I was at my grandparents' house a lot and. 
uh, they didn't have any fun movies to watch and we only had two channels. So yeah, it was, um, it was called home improvement power tool pursuit. Incredible. Okay. And it was, that's a solid it was, name. It was released in 1994. Um, oh, yeah. And so players weapons include modified tools. This is a nail gun, a blowtorch used as a flamethrower and a saw, which hurls energy waves. These weapons <laughs> are used to fight dinosaurs, acid spewing mummies, robot sentries and other enemies. The game's broken down into four worlds of four levels, each world containing a boss. The game had no real instruction manual. In its place, a fake manual was used with a sticker reading, Real Men Don't Need Instructions, a message which also appears on the splash screen. (laughs) Oh, Um, my God. (laughs) um, Holy Christ. And considering how esoteric a ton of, like, that shovelware uh, Super Nintendo game stuff was... The, you were probably just fucked if you if you bought that as a kid and just like you're just like how do I play this? Uh, get fucked, you know, buddy. <laughs> and you know, like it's I'm just looking at its its reception, its ratings right here. Not bad, slightly above average. People uh-huh. uh, people were receptive of the uh, of the home improvement video game. Incredible. I don't know if I don't know if any later consoles continued with the franchise though. That doesn't sound like it. I mean, real money makers. So I'm not sure why. <laughs> That's very good. All right. I, I also watched a lot of Home Improvement, um, but it was because I had a tiny crush on Jonathan Taylor Thomas. So <laughs> I mean, fair. <laughs> fair. That the neighbor? Or? No, that's one of the kids. Oh yeah, Wilson. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> something with those eyes and that bucket hat. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess yeah. I guess we've answered that and more now. So I yeah. guess it's on to the next person. Well, I crack yeah. another beer. Which of your pop culture opinions is most likely to get you shunned if you voiced it publicly? So voice it publicly. Mm-hmm. Which of my pop culture opinions is likely to get me shunned? Man, I wish I would have gotten this one. I think here, I, I guess I have one. I guess this counts as pop culture. Um, I One thing I would still stand by is that there are some bangers released in the genre of Christian rock. They're there. They're definitely there. They exist. Mm -hmm. The Newsboys had some. DC Talk had some. Um, Yeah, there was some good stuff in there. And I know people don't want to admit it, but it's true. Were you a big TFK fan back in the day? I was... the, The first concert I ever went to was Plus One. Um... Are we all familiar with Plus One? I don't know that one. They were like a basically a Christian version of In Sync. Incredible. I think, yes. Or no, I guess I guess there was I think there was four of them. So I guess would that be more like the Backstreet Boys? It sounds I, like minus one. <laughs> ah, um, yes. But um, yeah, that was the first concert I ever went to. So I was big into them. I was big into the Newsboys. Um, I, I basically like only listened to like Christian music until I was like. I don't know, probably like 12 or 13. Um, so I'm 95% it had, sure I saw the Newsboys in concert, so I get it. Jealous. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they went to YC one year. Yeah, and that's, you and I, I went. When I, when I got to see someone riding on the hood of someone's car after the Edmonton Oilers won their uh, game against the Anaheim Ducks because they were oh, yeah. beside the school bus and they were drunk on the hood of their car while their buddy was driving it. Sick. It's like good, good, good image for a bunch of either Christians or wanna be Christians on a school bus. <laughs> oh, it's a little judgy, Josh. Wanna be Christians? I mean, I was not there for pure reasons. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why were you, mean, you like, there? Two- I wanted to go to music. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna <laughs> say I was there. Up chicks. I was there because I wanted to go to heaven. No. Oh. Ah, there. See, that's a pure reason. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So this was like 2006 playoffs kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was during the God, playoff those run. Those were good days. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, my answer to that question is uh, Wes Anderson sucks. That is a very hot take. Sticking to it. Mine is that uh, Disney has done irreparable damage to film that almost completely cancels out their contributions to the animation genre. That's 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 too much thinky for me. <laughs> I'd have to process that but to really decide if I I don't think it's going to get you shunned. I think like half of people agree with you. What what's the single biggest sin that Disney has committed? 
uh, creating a pseudo monopoly around film and using it to pressure theaters into taking smaller cuts, thus driving small theaters out of business. Oh, I was I was thinking you were just going to tell me a movie that you really hated. <laughs> no, no, I really hate Disney, like at a base <laughs> level. Yeah, Josh has given sincerity our answers to the question jar questions. <laughs> I mean, I would say more, but I might actually get in trouble for uttering threats. This is not the crowd for it, but I recently got shunned for saying that love actually stinks, so. I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's also becoming a very mainstream opinion. Yeah. I, I've never I've never seen it, but I know the meme where he's holding the the signs. Is that from Love Actually? Yes, yeah. Okay. That's all I know about it. Yeah. That's a yeah, that was I recently saw a video that pointed out how awkward that is cuz he's like standing at this woman's door and he has this, his first sign says say that it's carolers because her fiance is home and he's about mm-hmm. to like say some shit that he doesn't want her fiance to hear. And so he like presses play and he's like, I was like that's a fucking weird thing to do. I mean, <laughs> like, if is you the, look into most is the whole um is the whole plot presented by him presenting cards of what's happening? Yes. Or is there more to the movie? Yeah, it's just like that the whole movie's just like that Bob Dylan music video where he's just dropping the cards <laughs> yes. real fast. <laughs> it's yeah. just explaining what's Perfect. been happening. Yeah. Real bad. I mean, most rom coms, especially if you look at the ones that are made like twenty plus years ago. You watch them with a fresh mindset of not being like ten, mm-hmm. and being you're like that's that's kind of fucked up actually. Yeah, like ninety nine percent of the time. <laughs> even How I Met Your Mother, it's not even that old, and I'm like, oof. Like, yeah, like Barney fucking sucks, and I know get that that's the joke. It's like, oh, he sucks. He like lies to women. Isn't that hilarious? I'm like, ah, uh, the no, the aughts. <laughs> yeah, the aughts. Any well, answer. we ought to do Nicole's question, which is, what is your favorite joke? Um, oh, that's a good one. Oh, okay. My 10-year-old cousin told me this one. It's not going to be as funny when I tell it, but it's my favorite joke right now, so I'm going to tell it anyways. So there's these three guys, and they end up on a desert island. Um, and they rub this lamp. Jeannie comes out, says, you each get three wishes. First guy says, I want to be super rich. Jeannie goes, boom, done. Second guy goes... Yep, me too. I would like to be loaded and have a giant house. Boom. Done. Third guy goes, I want for the rest of eternity for my right arm to spin clockwise forever. And Jeannie goes, boom. Done. Goes back to the first guy. And the guy goes, you know what? I want a beautiful wife. Boom. Done. And the second guy goes, I would love a family. Boom. Done. The third guy goes, I would like my left arm to go counterclockwise, counterclockwise like this for the rest of my life. Boom, it's done. Third, so that goes back to the first guy. The first guy goes, you know what? I'd really like to be able to help people out. I'd like to start a charity. Boom, it's got a charity, it's successful. Second guy goes, yeah, you know what? I'd really like to give back as well. I'd like to start like a um, grassroots community garden. Boom. He's got it. Third guy goes, I would like for my head to keep bobbing like this for the rest of my life. Um, And the genie goes, yep. Boom. It's done. And so uh, three years later, they all meet up and they're sitting in a bar. And the first guy goes, you know, I've got a beautiful wife. I've got all the money I could spend. I can... Put, funnel all this money into uh, this charity that I really care about. My life's been really fulfilling. I couldn't be happier. Second guy goes, yeah, you know what? Like, I've got this beautiful family. Um, I really feel connected to my community. I've got, like, enough money that we're creating these initiatives that are saving the earth. I just, like, I've never felt better. I'm so happy that this happened to us. And the third guy goes, I think I've made a mistake. <laughs> Anyways, that's my joke. (laughs) (laughs) Holy fuck. I, yeah, and we were all sitting there watching and we're just, and it's, he took like, and of course he's a kid, so we took like fucking 20 minutes to tell this joke (laughs) and we're waiting for the punchline. I'm like, what's he going to, like, why would he do that? There's got to be some sort of stupid reason. And then it's like, no, he's just. That dumb. An idiot. (laughs) Did he just cut, did he come up with it himself? I don't think so, but. 
did you did you preface that by saying that 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 this is who told it to you? I think I yes. missed that part. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I missed that you were you were reporting a joke to us, and I thought that this <laughs> this was the joke. Okay, yeah, that that's All what right. Nicole spent the last five hours working on was that. <laughs> <joke>. <laughs> it's like it's like I want to I want to be nice. I want to laugh. <laughs> I, uh, I I have one that's a lot shorter. Um, all right. Yeah, let's hear it. I don't. I don't think I would have told it last time. But if I did, just pretend. Um, do you do you guys know the 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 main ingredient that you need to make pickle bread? Is it pickles? Is it bread? Oh, I'm lost. Yeah, I don't know. What is it? What is the main ingredient that you would use to make pickle bread? Dill dough. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's good. That, that would have been really <laughs> relevant last time. <laughs> oh, man. That's why that's why I was thinking I was like, did I tell this last time? Because that would have been the time to tell it. So anyway. Oh, <laughs> my personal favorite is a horse walks into a bar and a bartender just asks him why the long face. Boom. Classic. Classic. Instant classic. Right? Up there with. I don't know any jokes. Last question. Uh, would you rather be a queen bee or a queen ant? Mm. I, don't, I don't know if I know enough about animals. I'm going to answer wrong. There is no wrong answer with the question jar, Kelly. All right. I feel like... I mean, a queen bee, my instinct is is somehow more glamorous. Do they both work mostly the same way? Like they they both have to like give birth to the entire colony and then they just kind of like hang out. I think so. And they throw at any others that might become queens. Right. Like, and this this is true for both. Uh, I don't know enough about ants, but I I happen to learn a lot more than I was expecting to learn about bees this summer because my parents' neighbor uh, has got an apiary going on. That's cool as so. hell. Yeah, and literally as he was showing me it, because I was fucking stoked. I was like, yeah, you got to show me this shit. And as he's showing it, uh, a stray swarm actually started forming around. And he uh, had to go catch the queen in the swarm so he could transfer it to a new hive and then add to his collection. So it was pretty cool. And then he gave me some mead that he made with the honey he gets from his bees. So like fucking all around great day. Got to see an apiary want to get my own apiary going on now. Yeah, And absolutely. I got to drink some good mead. That's so cool. Do you guys have you guys seen those videos online from the this girl? Her I know exactly who you're talking about. Texas Bee Works. Yeah, yeah. Another yeah. great day of saving the bees. Is she the one? I, um, yeah, she, I've yeah seen she just cool. like yeah. goes in with her bare hands and she's like. So basically, people call her when they have like swarming bees or like bees that have created a hive in a um, like a place that's inconvenient for humans. I do think that. If if I had to make this decision, I would also choose to be the queen bee. Just seeing how sad and dejected and aimless the bees look when they don't have their queen, mm. I think it would make me feel good to have to have that level of uh, of adoration. That that amount of simping, if you will, to put it in, exactly to put it in Zoomer terms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would like to be simped. I think I would go with the queen bee because I feel like it'd be more likely to get the opportunity to hang out with cool Instagram influencers because I I think I would still be a relentless clout chaser if I was a queen bee mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a queen ant is probably more likely to get I, you just get a lot more respectful treatment even the ants are like really important to e e ecosystems etc um, like I've heard it said that like if ants died we'd be just completely fucked but I, I think it's also kind of true of bees I mean, anyway, yeah. <laughs> in practice, though, the you know the people are all about like protecting bees and having apiaries and like making friends with the bees and uh, ants. Like, if the ant hill is in the way, I think you're just way more likely to have someone just completely destroy it via. Yeah, you usually tend to boot fuck the thing. I know is a garbage child. <laughs> is that an ant hill? Boom, boot fucked. <laughs> I think I see the ant as more of a blue collar. I, I actually wanted to make like a proletariat joke where I'm like, why are we why are we trying to be the royalty anyways? We should be part of the proletariat uprising. 
Yeah, I think the ant is the people's insect, but I, I think even even in the upper echelons of ant power, I think you're still at a more grassroots level of existence. Uh, you're like grassroots. Yeah. Um, and whereas the bees, it's like you know, they can they can fly. They 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 have a little bit more. Uh, I don't know, freedom. I guess you'd say. Um, so yeah, I I, I think I I would prefer to be the bee, but. I think I respect the ant more. The ant queen is the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth to the <laughs> Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> I hope there's like three people that understand that. I know. I like that idea of I respect the ant, but I want to be the bee. It's like you're working really hard and you're really important. And that's good for you. I'm really happy mm-hmm. for you being an ant. Mm-hmm. Cause like the ant, the ant is the people's insect, but I am the kind of person that, like you give me the opportunity to be a royalty, I'll probably just flip and do it. That that sounds like one of those things that you'd see on one of those Instagram grind set influencer sites. Oh have God, like yeah, absolutely. Over like tiger pictures, it's like people. It's like people respect the ant, but people want to be the bee. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, it's got to be a really big close up of a bi then for some reason, <laughs> just a super close up, like a macro lens to the extreme. And I'm, I've been really into grind set. Have I told you guys about um, the importance of rising and grinding? Because I've, I've yeah, got a nice 10-minute spiel prepared. You <laughs> Are you it? ready to tell us about your... The, the, the real question is, though, before you start on I need to ask you the most important question. Is it an alpha grind set or is it a sigma grind set? It's more of a ligma grind set. <laughs> 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 Fuck. But, uh, I think we should just cut the show here. Like, I don't think we're gonna get. I don't think we're gonna that's, top that's that. A, joke. That's a pretty good, pretty good topper right there. <laughs> that's the right. What are we cherry. gonna cut to? Uh, me having more of this beer because it's left over from the company Christmas party. Because I. That's stole right. It. It's time for the game. <laughs> Man, I got a dancing number and a background singer. I mean, shit, how do I even compete with that? All right, well, do you want to uh, start explaining the game? This is the long version. It plays out because it's... Oh, okay. Well, let me do something that you should never do and completely reveal myself to be sleep deprived and rub my eyes disgustingly first because I woke up at like 2 in the morning today (laughs) because I suck at sleeping but man this is still going actually before we get started on the game I need to share with you all before I join these fine folks today I watched a film that was shot in Edmonton on a budget of $15,000 Canadian called, uh, I've already, Skimmer Rink. That's what it was called. Skimmer uh, Rink? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'd check it out, but that's not, uh, that's not really the important part of it. The important part is it's a horror film. And after the fact, one of the people I'd watched it with sent a picture, uh, with the cat, with, with no caption. He, uh, he sent this and then just silence. And then someone messages back. Is everything okay over there? And there's just nothing for another five minutes. I don't know what you describe that as. I'm going to take my best crack at it. All right. I feel like this is like a very, uh, this is a front view of like a very skinny horse with, uh, on a, it's, it's backlit, which is why it's silhouetted. Wait, is that how silhouettes work? Yeah. Like I'm kind of in a, some sort of saw type murder room with this. This horse is kind of leaning over me, I think, as an executioner or like a torturer. That's what it is. That's like that's um, that's the that's the light that's in my eyes, and the horse is like, yeah, you you've messed with the wrong horse. Have you ever seen the movie Wild Wild West? I have not. No, like, I know with, of it. With the uh, Will Smith. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so right. Great. Where the, 
They play where they play the guy's last, the last thing he saw through his head. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm thinking of when I see this. I think this is <laughs> this would be someone's last vision that they would like replay from their from their dead extracted eyeball. So it's upside down. So we need to turn it the other way around. I still got nothing. It's concerning. It's concerning that that is a message. And then about ten minutes after he sent it, he responded again with. Didn't like seeing that getting some water. And someone asked, what is it? And he's never responded since. And that was uh, 45 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. So he's probably dead. So you're live streaming your friend's murder is what you're saying. Uh, yes. Well, in this world of extreme content, that's uh, that's what we have to do, basically. To <laughs> to get the just end now. If, if my theory is correct, and this is in fact taken out of the movie Wild Wild West, that is, in fact, a former Confederate general who is responsible for the massacre of a bunch of freed slaves. Man, that's pretty intense because this guy's British, so. Would you put it past them? No, absolutely not. We learned from watching you, Dad. <laughs> 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 but yes, uh, that, I just I've been sitting on that for like since the show started. I'm like, OK, we watched a horror movie. He sent that image and he hasn't responded since. So I'm like, well, I guess a friend's dead. What do you do? (laughs) And if you are listening to this in audio form, this is the exact kind of visual content you're missing out on. Exactly. Which is why you should watch the live show. (laughs) So we will get to the game now, though. But first, I think we need a little bit of a recap because it has been some time. And by recap, I mean strain the recesses of my memory to try to remember what I had you guys do last time. I believe this took place. He doesn't want to know. Yeah, he's out. He he already knows too much. It's fine. That's fair. He already knows far, far too much. Well, we did skip the interview. Oh, he's got to go get his, uh, he's got to get his jacket. Ah, yes, of course. His, uh, of course. How can I forget about the costume? And again, and one the, of the reasons the that you should watch the live show is because you will see beautiful things like this costume and Tanner I mean, potentially breaking You can watch the recorded video. Headphone. That's fine. I, I spend forever editing the recorded videos. Yeah. So. I had to... I had to put on my my sailor jacket and then sit on my headphones. I saw that happen. I was like, "Oh boy, I hope those weren't <laughs> yeah. expensive." Yeah, no, they're not. They're so, they they they're terrible. Uh. So to recap, uh, you guys were on a mission on a planet or moon that seemed to be entirely covered in blood. You guys took a sub down into the bloody abyss. Sorry, did you say it appears to be covered in blood? Have we tested it? Do we know if it's blood? I don't believe you did test it in the entire time that you had. Cool, 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 cool. Well, Pego cool. said it was blood, and Pego is, in fact, a robot. It's This is true. Yeah. And, and uh, robots have never lied. Well, I mean, a robot can't be wrong, right? Oh, exactly. I if watched... we've learned one thing from AI art, it is always 100% bang on when a robot decides to do something. I watched iRobot, and that robot lied. Spoiler alert. That was also a terrible movie. <laughs> okay, well, that's my unpopular po- pop po- <laughs> culture opinion. <laughs> we are, we're continuing the theme of Will Smith classic movies here. A, a, yeah. A classic's a straw, doing a lot of lifting there, but Will Smith mm-hmm. movies indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you guys entered in a sub. Some shenanigans happened. I believe some pegging happened, but you'll have to go back to the old episode to see whether or not that did happen. And the episode ended with you guys crashing into the hull of a ship with the submarine, sinking into the hull and sealing off the ship so that it didn't collapse and leak with the could be blood. Okay. The right. Blood so we got into to... our dive suits, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think mine was just like a little. A little rubber I pulled over my head, if I remember correctly. Yes, because we didn't have something for uh, for your uh, for your character, apparently. Yeah. So my name be Hel- Helen McKeelstern. Um, I'm old, grizzled, missing an eye, and a pe- and I have a pig leg. Um, so I just appeared somewhere on the ship. No one remembers where I came from or when I boarded. Um, I tell people I've been sailing my, my whole life, but um, as soon as I try to do anything, it quickly becomes apparent that I have no idea how to sail. Um, 
yeah, I have no background because I think I was lazy to do too lazy to write one. Oh, yeah. Um, so I said I could be an opportunist, a grifter, or um, just trying to cover up my about of amnesia. Um, do I? Do you want to hear my unique talent? Yes, of course okay. you want to hear your unique talent. <laughs> so my unique talent is that I can plug my nose and build up enough pressure in my head to shoot my glass eyeball out like a cannonball. Perfect. Or Sounds I right. guess more. I guess more. More. If we're a musket to shot. Size, a musket shot. Yeah, would be a good, better one. Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. All right, and then we're gonna go to Kelly's character. Yeah. So I, of course, am Pego, and I am a robot. I and hate you. Yeah. <laughs> so did that much. Much, Did that sound closer to it? Because I, I, I noticed I can adjust the pitch here, and I think the default is lower than I. I wish I'd written this down. Well, you can write it down for next time. All right. Well, did that did that pitch sound more true to how it sounded before? You like, were asking the wrong person because I have a goldfish brain. You mean you haven't watched the the Pego clips over and over? No, no, I can't say I have. So smooth. All the memories of this segment just slid right off it. All right. So anyway, uh, my name is Pego, and I am a robot. And I'm tall, dark, I have very smooth skin, robust and imposing, a little boxy. And when I was editing. You made a joke, Nicole, about uh, a YouTuber named Boxy, which oh, I've man. never heard of. <laughs> oh, was, man, I, that's I some old internet shit there. Yeah. Hell yeah. I went to go look it up, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I <laughs> like, I like My life is worse off for having seen that. That is like early 4chan shit there. Like, my yeah, God. So, so fuck you for bringing that up. The world's, <laughs> the world's first internet, the internet's first simp queen. Basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, basically, Pego is dormant uh, when it's not in use and only came along uh, online when the ship went to yellow alert. Uh, Pego is programmed to love and not much else uh, and mostly programmed to peg all the other options, if I recall, are in beta mode. So who knows how those will go. Uh, And Pego's unique talent is that they don't need oxygen to breathe. That is a pretty unique talent amongst the crew here. Yeah, and they also have the like the R two D two thing as both yeah, a yeah, gadget their little, and a tool, their little pegger there, which I th- I think was slightly damaged, but I can't remember. I feel like it probably was during a pegging operation of some kind. I think it was when I was doing an R two D two operation, but well, yes, that's is that not a kind of pegging? I guess I was pegging the ship. Yeah, yes. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, last but not least, Tanner. All right, well back, Willie. Uh, well back, Willie. Uh, Old old sailor man type, uh, missing his left hand. Uh, his left hand has been replaced by metal tongs um, that can function as a rudimentary grabber uh, if if that kind of thing is needed. Uh, dresses in a decaying old naval uniform with a mix of patches and medals from uh, crazy random nations and services. Um, Whaleback Willie. <coughs> Used to be a sea captain, and stories indicate both military and civilian sailing experience. Sailing days ended with the incident, as yet never expanded upon what exactly that was, but gestures vaguely with the tongs whenever he refers to it. Lives in the beached and rotted out hull of an old frigate, now deathly afraid of entering water, or blood, for that matter. (laughs) Perfect. Also- So when he sees the blood, he's- Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Shut the fuck up, Kelly. We're not done yet. Also- (laughs) Unique talent can communicate fluently with elephant seals, provided they are speaking the South Seas dialect. <laughs> Perfect. Is the South Seas dialect that pirate voice? Like, is that what that is? No, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, your character is everything that uh, he- Helm McKeelstern is aspiring to be. <laughs> That's yeah, a success you say, story. You could say that like my character is on like the downswing of the career that maybe <laughs> Helm McKeelstern is aspiring to. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. And now I remember why I liked making this story so much. Because <laughs> of the pegging. Yes, naturally. Uh, if there's anything I know about every video game I love, it's that it features a robot that does some sort of sexual act. You know, in the home improvement video game. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Fall of New Vegas, but that's a far more obscure <laughs> reference. All right. So we shall begin with the crew entering the ship 
in their diving suits and noting pretty quickly that the sub has wedged into the hull in such a way that it's actually created a vacuum seal, leaving the atmosphere of the ship relatively intact. So the, the thing sensors, that we have smashed into is a ship. Yes. The uh, indicate the indicators on your diving suits show you that there is a survivable amount of oxygen in the ship at this moment. Don't care. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> could not care less. I'm sure 66 percent of this crew might care a little bit, though. Just a Just little bit. Even. So. I, I go look to my my two compatriots here and say, who would like to go first? I was not programmed to lead. <laughs> <laughs> but only to breed. Yeah. Oh. Hey Personally, I, I don't want to be in front of Pego. I cannot breed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So Helmut Kiel's turn puts on his bravest face and he goes, Yar, it, it wouldn't be the first time I've gone into danger first. Um, so I'm going to go in first. All right. So. Um, Godspeed you, Helmut Kiel's turn. <laughs> <laughs> also, I remembered, I, I see on my sheet that I'm bad at bravery. So I'm definitely. Yes, bad yes. Uh, on that note. Oh, um, I'm also bad at bravery. <laughs> incredible. <so. laughs> I love it. was good at bravery, but you know. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to have to get uh, Helm Keelster to roll a check against their bravery while um, I panically try to find where I saved. Did you say panically? Yes. That's a real word. Shut the fuck up and roll your dice. Kelly, I need you to roll my dice. All right. Uh, so it looks like you got a four there. Oh, boy. No, wait, that's a nine. The lighting is not good. The lighting yeah. is not good. A mm. nine. All right. A nine. You swallowing your fear and mustering an amount of courage that you haven't seen since you first got that peg leg installed. You unzip the diving suit and remove your helmet and breathe in a f breath of stale and somewhat irony smelling and tasting air. How irony would you say like on a scale of like one to Alanis Morissette or should I say <laughs> Alanis Morissette to like anything that's actually irony? <laughs> I'm going to say closer to Alanis Morissette, but there's definitely some tinges of irony. Okay. Like, like um, it's like rain on your wedding day <laughs> if you're doing an outdoor wedding. And right. you did that because you are a weather forecaster and you got the gig wrong. Right. Okay. So, got it. Like somewhat ironic, but you got to really work for it. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of irony we're looking at right now. Okay. Can I see any of the blood dripping in here and can I taste it? There is a steady drip of blood happening from a small, small fissure crack along where the sub collided. Okay. It's like um, a hairline crack. If you can crack. taste it or if you may taste it? I mean, can and can if they choose to. Um, yeah, I would like to, I would like to try and taste it. All right. The uh, blood when you taste it is, it tastes like blood. It definitely tastes like blood, but it doesn't seem viscous at all. Like, like there's okay. no platelets in it whatsoever. It's not clotting. Okay. So it's not nosebleed blood. It's like anemic blood, not anemic. What's the other word? No, anemic. anyways. No, no, no. Uh, hypo. I don't remember anymore. He he okay. Hemophilic. Hem I think that's you. hemophilic. Yeah. Cause that's right. what Sir Nicholas's son had. Right. Yes. Oh, sad. Um. Cool. Cool. Good to so, know. Yeah. So it is certainly blood. Yeah. I, I have this be do blood we, uh, for sure. Do we know? Are Are we aware of what portion of the ship we have crashed into? Are we like? Uh, well, if you look, if you look around, if you roll a perception, in fact. All right. Can. 
Sorry, go ahead. Here, I, I, I have my dice unless you want to roll for me. For oh, the integrity I trust of your the role. game. I, I, yeah, I trust your roll. Okay. Yeah, we believe Let's you. See. Let's yeah. see. And our dice cam stinks, so. <laughs> uh, I rolled a, a, a five and a one, so a six. All right. So, you look around and you see through your knowledge of ship stuff. I don't I don't know how to word that. I'm not a ship guy. <laughs> Shippery? You notice that you are near the bow. I believe of the word the is ship. knowledge, but it's spelled like N A U L E D G. The bow of the ship. And this particular model of ship, you know from your civilian service, has in this area the captain's quarter. A dining hall a little bit farther be, uh, behind that, closer to the stern than the bow, and a general use washroom immediately to your right. General use, does that mean like any genders, or does that mean like you can use it for whatever the fuck you want? Like you could wash your hands <laughs> in the toilet if you wanted. I was good. I'm surprised you went with washing your hands and not like doing blow or something like that. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Grand Prairie. <laughs> But yeah, general use means that anyone or anything can use that washroom. Okay. But would Neat. I need to? Also here, a slight groaning of the hull from the pressure from how deep you guys are. Is it definitely the hull or what's Pego doing? <laughs> a slight groaning. <laughs> I can be programmed to go to any depth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm not sure who Pego is talking to right now. But <laughs> just, 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 uh, just musing, it's, it's, just musing it, out loud. It's their advertisement regulations. If they, if they don't uh, engage in pegging every 45 minutes to an hour, they have to repeat their uh, advertising slogans. So if we're going to, if we're going to do anything with trying to salvage this ship, we should probably see if there's any way that we could uh, move it under its own power. So we should probably find the engine room. Affirmative. Okay. And uh, I pretend that I haven't heard you, and I say, "Yeah, it's probably it probably be a good idea to look for the engine room." I thought of that idea myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm Negative. doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of impro- I, I'm kind of enjoying Kelly being the straight man for once in uh, <laughs> in a game. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, my characters are always serious. <laughs> All right, so with that in mind, how are you guys going to seek to? So are are there any kind of interactable looking? panels or like purpose-built r2d2 slots <laughs> well i won't i won't make you roll perception on this because it is too glaringly obvious to miss but mm -hmm. there's a console near one of the doors and above the door it says captain's quarters ensign mckillstern if i may i think it's best that i approach the captain's quarters do i have your permission is is this robot a sub? <laughs> I am programmed in a variety of roles. Would you like me to be a sub? <laughs> <laughs> I yes, because I want to see. In this context, I am simply obeying the chain of command as you. I have assumed to be an ensign, and I do not rank from. From my military experience, I suspect that this room that is labeled Captain's Quarters is, in fact, a trap. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Unknown. <laughs> so what is your plan to determine this? I am going to have Pego <laughs> oh. go to try to open the door. <laughs> well, if you would have me. <laughs> All right, so you're you're gonna tell Pego to open the door. I'm gonna suggest 
Oh, and okay. Pego opened the door. I'm gonna plant the idea in his head. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna in- inception it into his head. <laughs> uh, you're you're gonna inception an idea into my head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The idea Go of going it. to try to open that door into your sweet robot brain. So I'm gonna get you to roll persuasion then. Okay. Am I rolling some kind of like opposing? I'm going to say roll perception. <laughs> I would say perception. Okay, I'm normal at that. So that so that he can perceive what I'm trying to do to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I rolled another another five and a one, so I have a six. All right. And what does Pego have? Hey, it landed on the camera that time. Uh, I got a nine. A nine. All right. So you can see that they're trying to pull a fast one on you. Yeah. Not out of any... Oh, don't, don't rope me into this. I, <laughs> this is not my idea. I only but have good ideas. But you also know that it's it's not malicious. It is more... Uh, it is Callous. more a case of just like, there's less chance of you dying from a trap than a squishy human. But I, I've noticed that he was trying to incept Yeah, him. yeah, 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 yeah. Captain Admiral McKeel Stern, I perceive that you are attempting to make your idea appear as though it is mine. I believe you deserve the credit as a Captain Admiral. You, you know that McKeel Stern is not Tanner's character, right? I was doing a bit. Of course, I know that I am referring to uh, <laughs> Captain Admiral Whaleback Willie. I actually thought that, that that played along well with, with the narrative because <laughs> of McKeel Stern trying to sort of be what Whaleback Willie is. So the idea that, that you know, yeah, you'd be trying would, to would, be, fast one. would be taking credit for, for what they thought was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, I think for, some, for whatever reason, uh, I had already pegged McKeel Stern as an answer. And... <laughs> Uh, like having parsed all of Whaleback Willie's medals, I looked at them and was like, well, you know, th- this person has this, like, this admiral insignia over here and captain insignia over here. They must be a- an admiral captain. And, and I completely uh, flubbed their name. Yeah, Not an well, admiral captain, but an admirable captain. Yes. <laughs> oh. I was not programmed to do bits. I will perform a self-diagnostic to see if there has been blood ingress into key circuits. Um. So I say, ER. I if this Excellent robot. Excellent TV show. <laughs> <laughs> it took me. It took me a second. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I just laughed with the group. I don't know what we're <laughs> laughing about. Um, good. Anson McGilstern, you said ER. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. There might be Stupid. some blood in there. Stupid. <laughs> I must restate, I was not programmed to do this. <laughs> I am not certain why this is happening. <laughs> okay. So, um, I say... Yar, I, uh, this robot clearly be a sub and, and I naturally, uh, be a dom. So I'm going to try to also convince this robot to risk his life for us. Okay. Well, I'm going to get you to roll intimidation. Please, you are not dom. You are intelligent and wise. Believe in yourself. <laughs> you're going to roll an intimidation because you're attempting to dominate Oh, this submissive I was, I was robot. hoping that I could roll persuasion because that's I'm good well, at that. But that's okay, incorrect. can you roll for me, Kelly? Uh, sure. What are what are you rolling? Uh, intimidation. You are rolling resilience this time. Well, but I'm I'm not I'm not saying I won't go do the thing. I just I just wanted uh, Wheelback Willie to take the credit for the good plan. Yeah, but now you're being yelled at by somebody else, so you're, okay. you have to still roll resilience for it. Okay, so are you good or bad or normal at this? I'm normal. I don't, I'm not. I'm not a particularly good dumb. All right. Well, I'm. I'm a normal also. So I'm gonna be red, and you're gonna be green. Yeah. I can see that you might have gotten eleven. Whomever green is. I already forgot who green is. It's me. All right. So 
it looks like Green heartily wins. So give us a really dominating reason for this robot to go hit the console. Yar, listen here, you bad, bad robot. You're gonna go open that door. I'll spank you hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been a good robot. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you wish to spank me, this is within my programming. <laughs> <laughs> Due to the extremely aggressive, intimidating, domineering way that McKeel Stern says the command, you know that you won't even get that programmable spanking if you don't interact with the console. Or the door, rather. Sorry, the door. I perceive that you want me to interact with the door first, and will consider spanking later. And I <laughs> and I start heading over to the to the door. All right. The, the steel door riveted with extra plating seems almost impossible to move without some sort of extra strength ability or some other means. So is there is there like a like an interactable panel with it or well the console right beside the door right so can I put my R two D two thing in the console <laughs> there is there is unfortunately only a keyboard in this case there's only a keyboard uh I guess I can kind of finger type like one finger yeah. type with my R two D two thing all right the what is the first key that you press the console comes to life it groans and clatters and you see. In a, uh, if you've ever seen The Matrix, the way that the text scrolls across like that, sure. you see a sentence flash. It says, enter coordinates. More information required. Hello, computer. Do you wish to interface? The computer is unfortunately an outdated model that lacks an ability to be interfaced with outside of normal keyboard commands. So what I see is basically like a flashing like yeah, text Yeah, flashing green, screen. enter coordinates with an input line underneath it. So w would I know what like the coordinates, like the space coordinates of our ship were as it crashed? Uh, you wouldn't offhand, no. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to... Does it like, does it suggest like there's like a character limit or some kind of like format that I would recognize the coordinates to be in a longitudinal latitudinal entry. Ensign McKeelstern, do you wish me to begin guessing at coordinates? I may make guesses at a rate of, uh, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to roll for how many guesses I can make per. All minute. right. Uh, fuck. It's fine. I got three. Three. I can make okay. three guesses per minute <laughs> when operating at peak capacity. Oh, good lord! <laughs> uh, My self-diagnostic is complete. There appears to be minor blood ingress, which is shorting out bit prevention protocols and maybe slowing uh, coordinate guessing abilities. Er, I suggest we put in the coordinates six nine six nine. Those be my favorite numbers. I put those in. The uh, screen doesn't give a confirmation or denial, but the l line immediately blanks out and keeps blipping just with enter coordinates. Okay, well that that wasn't a guess from me, so I'm gonna put in a guess. All right. Can, do I just like roll for how good the guess is, or do I have to give you something? Uh, yeah, let's let's do a. Uh... Ooh, that's a tough one. I you don't really have a luck stat, which is what I would usually go with in this situation. Uh, so let's go with. I mean, what is luck if not wisdom? Uh, in, the opposite of that, actually, I would say. Oh. Um. Let's go with... We could just say I'm normal at luck and I'll just roll it like a normal. Yeah, we might as well. Because, yeah, I, I can't see a stat that makes me scream luck. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't want you to scream. Luck. 
All right, so that's a five. That's not great. Your three guesses are all not rejected, but not accepted by the computer. Oh, no, I can only do three guesses in a minute. That was one guess. You're going to give me about 20 seconds before I can guess again. Gotcha, gotcha. Is anyone else going to do anything in the meantime? peak operating capacity. I'm going to stick with my suspicion that even if we get through this door, it's not going to go well for us because it's probably booby trapped. So we go are. With- I don't have a problem with that. There'd be boobies we- on the other side of this door. I, <laughs> I suggest we redouble our efforts. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect, I suspect that where we need to get to in the captain's quarters, I suspect is in fact what is labeled as the bathroom. That is how things used to go when I was in the military is that the captain's quarters are always disguised as the bathroom. So let's head over there. Which military was this? <laughs> this was <Sir>. the, uh, <laughs> ha- have you ever heard of the, uh, the Symbionese Liberation Army? In no? passing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I think I read a book about that once, but please, please remind the, the, the other people in the room. Patty Hearst was our most famous member. No. No. That one's Nothing? lost on me, I'm oh. afraid. Oh, come on. Have you ever heard the song uh have you ever heard the song Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner by Warren Zevon? Sorry, the only yes. ship related uh yes, I have. Okay. the ship related songs I listen to are Stan Rogers related. That's not a ship song necessarily. It's about the it's about the wars in the Congo. So in the final verse of Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner, he he says the line Patty Hurst heard the burst of Roland's Thompson gun and bought it. That is a reference to Patty Hearst, who is the heiress to the Hearst fortune. She was kidnapped by uh, like a terrorist group called the Symbionese Liberation Army. Um, and then she ended up, I believe it was robbing a bank with them. That's like how she resurfaced after she was kidnapped as a member of this organization, actively participating in one of their attacks. Incredible. Yeah, because she got really Stockholm syndrome, right? Exactly. She, she's like the most famous like case of like that that people put forward of, I, of how I would this ar- happens. I would argue the second most famous case. The first one being, you know, the one that is named after. What is it named after? <laughs> Isn't it Stockholm? The- it's a city in Sweden. <laughs> like, I believe that. What, well, what, so yeah, what, I got the reference, but Pego didn't. Pego's not <laughs> operating at peak operating capacity. Never mind. I thought that it was named after. Anyways, sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, that's bank robbery. Named incident. after John Stockholm. <laughs> Happened in Johnny Stockholm, Stocks. Sweden. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. All Anyways, right. sorry. We can. So you're gonna enter. Okay. So you, so you. What happened was you answered Pego's question. Yes. Uh, and he went. I trust your judgment. That sounds like a good army. <laughs> <laughs> so. The bathroom Please bear doesn't in mind, appear to I was be locked. Not programmed with military knowledge. I was programmed <laughs> to love, which is arguably as opposing as the concept can get. <laughs> <laughs> so, upon pushing on the bathroom door, Apologies you find for it opening. Love to you. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the door pushes open with. Almost no resistance. You can hear the hinges squeak slightly under the small amount of rust that is built up on them. Inside, it's a bathroom. There, Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it appears to be in relatively good condition, considering the fact that the ship is underwater and a wreck. But, attached to a completely strip, flesh-stripped hand you see a chain with a brass key attached to it. Oh, yeah. Neat. Is it just a hand, or is there other thing? Is there, like, a whole body attached to it? Just a hand. Oh. Can I put in my second guess? Because I feel like I'm still down at the console. Yes, you, you sure can. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if this one's still usable, but would this hand be preferable to the tongs? <laughs> w- Willie, would you like to replace? I don't. I, I, I don't know how hands work. <laughs> uh, oh, a ten. At my age, I'm I'm really up for anything. So sure, let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> a 
All right. So as Pego puts his entry in, he punches in the coordinates of his guess, and the longitudinal coordinates are accepted. They remain locked in, but the latitudinal coordinates are incorrect. How do I how do I know this? Do I get like a a nice little chime indicating it? There's it it remain the the numbers remain on the screen with a comma separating what you expect are the missing parts of the coordinates. But and just no to chime? be just to be no. clear, it, it it's not sixty nine, correct? It I is not affirmative. I wanted to I you know what guys I wanted to bring this up because I was really disappointed I said sixty nine earlier and no one said nice. <laughs> I'd like to revisit that. <laughs> so, the numbers that remain on the screen are 39.2645 degrees north. The number are, is 39.2... What was it? 2645 <laughs> degrees north. The number is 39.2645 degrees north. Hopefully one of you can do something with that information. <laughs> Personally, I'm I'm more interested in the key. All right. We so found. are you taking the key? Yes. I'm going to take All right. the key. All right. And the hand. I'm I'm taking the hand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Separately or together? <laughs> I might as well keep them together so I don't lose either one. All right. Putting it into a spare pocket on your jacket, you put the bony hand with its fist still curled around the chain containing the brass key. Can I put my third guess into the console? You sure can. Five. That, the uh, coordinates are rejected. The ones you got correct are still there. Do you want me to continue trying? Yar, you know, sometimes I I forget a lot of things, so sometimes I be writing things down when they're important. Is there, might there be in this room somewhere where these coordinates might be written down? Is there, can I roll a perception? You, you sure can roll a perception. Cool. An eight. So... Beside the console, hidden almost inconspicuously, but still visible to someone who's just studying it enough, you see a small keyhole beside the door. Willie, I suggest we put your key in that hole. (laughs) (laughs) Is but Whaleback Willie is still in the bathroom, right? Yes. And I've got the key, and you don't have to tell me twice. So I'm going to put it in the hole. (laughs) Captain Admiral Willie, while you are in the bathroom, can you tell me if there is any writing in there, specifically on the wall of the stalls? That's good thinking. Back in the day, we we used to scrawl all the important coordinates right on the bathroom (laughs) stall. (laughs) All right. Uh, I'm not going to get your old perception on this. Uh, all you see is the typical sailor's graffiti, including what appears to be a rendition of a small boy peeing on the logo of what appears to be a rival ship company. Ha. Uh, is there is there like space in the wall or is it pretty full? It's uh it's pretty full. You can see there's been some pretty bored sailors killing company time on the toilet. Captain Admiral Willie, is there room to write more? Yes, but you're going to have to reach for it, son. It's way up there. I will move and give you access to the console. And so I I leave the console and I head into the bathroom. All right. I'm assuming you're going to insert the key into the keyhole there, uh, Whaleback? Oh, don't you know it. Yeah, so while he's doing that, I'm going to find a spot in the bathroom wall to write uh, for a good time, call Pego, and then I kind of put in my, like, subspace uh, key or however I get communicated with. All right, sounds good. Like sounds a QR good. code? A QR code, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It is important to put yourself out there. 
How is the key going? As the key turns, you hear a hiss of a hermetically sealed door unlocking, and the captain quarters door swings open mechanically and automatically. Yar, Willie, uh, whale back. Can I call? You, may I call you whale back? Please, please. <laughs> Whale back. I suggest you go in. Please, first. Mr. Willie was my father. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that the room is still well relatively well lit. The light bulb is dimming with age, but you still have a relatively clear vision of the room as you walk in. I enter the room and I take a gander. I always like to see what fellow captain's quarters look like and on the bedside table, I see uh, what looks to be the collected writings of Gabriele D'Annunzio. <laughs> what a find. The captain's quarters is relatively well decorated. You can see that he has pinned a few accreditations to services that you don't quite recognize, but look familiar in a vague sense. Like they're close to what you would have received in your own time and yet somehow strange and different, almost alien. There's also, on the dresser, a well-crafted, well-polished, and very well-used corncob pipe and a map. And on that map is a particular island marked out with an X with two sets of coordinates on it. You recognize the first part of the coordinates as some of the numbers that were successfully put into the console by Pego. I'm going to start going through the dresser with my R2-D2 tool and see if I find anything good. I immediately go for the corn cob pipe because it looks very captain-y. Perfect, perfect. And on the bed, as you're going for the corn cob pipe, you also see an extremely finely pressed suit and Ooh. a lockbox. Here. The lockbox is about the size of a jeweler's box, like uh, a little bit bigger than, like, say, a music box or something like that. Uh, as you riff through the drawers, by the way, uh, Pego, you find that every single one of the drawers is completely barren. No clothes, no remnants of clothes, completely and totally empty. Does Pego's body shape permit him to wear a suit or a jacket? I believe no, because that's why I didn't put a full dive suit on. Yeah, it's kind of I, I don't believe Pego is shaped. Because I'm very large and boxy. It's sort of like a box on triangular treads with a boxy head. Okay. And Hi, probably I'm generally larger boxy? than a person. Shut the fuck up, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> I only ask I because I... I, I, I and I talk like... <laughs> This and <laughs> <laughs> I only ask because I like to run a professional outfit and I like to have everyone wearing a jacket if possible. That's fair. That's fair. Unfortunately, uh, Pego will not be able to fit into that finely pressed suit. You can drape things over my uh, equivalent of shoulders. The top of the main box, if you will. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I do it. I, I do it for you. Got it. You, the, you drape the jacket. You cannot jacket. imagine how hard it is to find nice things in my size. <laughs> <laughs> the jacket drapes awkwardly over Pego, but he is his chassis is now somewhat covered by the jacket. His what? Chassis. Oh, <laughs> I thought you said his chastity. Oh, <laughs> his chastity. <laughs> Trust me, that is long gone. <laughs> That's not the Pego I know. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you have the jacket draped over Pego. Uh, what else is your plan here? There's the map and the lockbox. I the suggest putting the remaining coordinates into the console. Someone should really do that. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Pego is just like they're... They're just looking through just other, anywhere else Straight they can looting. look. Yeah, anything else that can be looted in this room. 
Um, I go for. I'm gonna. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna do that. You're gonna punch in the seconds, the final part of the coordinates. I'll punch is an aggressive word. I'm going to gently finger them in. Ah, uh, gently fingering. <laughs> of course, proper foreplay. Mm. Um, there is a terrific grinding sound as steel grates against steel, and what sounds like are pegged. Be that? Are you sticking your dick in the ship again? <laughs> I I poke my head out into the hallway. Negative. But <laughs> I. I noticed the way that you fingered in those coordinates. <laughs> Perhaps sometime we can swap notes. <laughs> <laughs> and with a crash that sounds half good, half bad, like a blockage has been uh, freed, but not particularly nicely to the machine that was freeing the blockage, you feel the ship itself shudder violently. Scanning, I have assessed the situation to be 50% good. <laughs> Precisely. With a, with a violent lurch that caused you all to have to roll a reaction. So this is this is me first. I'm going to roll both because I'm good at it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, nine, I'd say for that. Okay. Uh, and the, roll for Nicole now. I'm normal at this. A 10? Hell yeah. Psh, psh, All right, psh, and Tanner, psh, what did you psh, roll? Psh. Let's see, I'm I'm normal at reaction, so... Okay. What did you roll? Three. A three. All right, when the violent lurching of the ship happens, well, Pego's treads make him very stable, and he is unmoved at all and stays promptly on his... On his two treads. Um, and Helmet For what it's worth, I don't think Pego really has a gender. I, I just go with I just go with that for now because I'm lazy. Oh yeah, let's default male. It's not like yeah. that's a major problem with our society. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Just Helmet Kielstern, also a male. Large chest does <laughs> not mean I am male. <laughs> uh, is able to balance precariously on their peg leg, but then sets down and braces themselves and completely fails to fall over. However, Whaleback Willie, not expecting this, gets blasted backwards and hits their head on the bed, in which case the lockbox falls on their lap and they look at it dazedly. Admiral Captain Willie, what is in the box? I don't know. I'm quite dazed right now, son. You might have to open it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Acknowledged. And so I go over and I attempt to open the box with the when when all you have is an R2D2 tool, just, just every really problem it. looks like an R2D2 <laughs> hole. <laughs> Unfortunately, the more you examine the box, you see that it doesn't appear to have a single seam on it. It looks to be completely unopenable. I believe this be one of them lament configurations. <laughs> That's from, a good reference. From the Hellraiser franchise. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Are you certain it is not a brick? Bricks often resemble boxes with no openings because they are a similar shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to scan. I want to scan the box to see. I was going to say, Pego, if you could roll a perception. I got a three. You got a three. Your your scan doesn't reveal anything on there. On the box at all. It is shiny and black, very glossy, almost to the point where you can see your reflection on it. I must report that I cannot rule out that this object is not a brick. <laughs> In the Hellraiser series, didn't how do you open the boxes? Do you get put blood on them, or is that something else that I'm thinking of? Uh, I think I have not box. been programmed with pop culture knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's lots of pressing buttons and twisting and whatnot. Oh, okay. There's no buttons. Are are there? Any, you are a whale back. Tell me, tell me. Are there any? Be there any buttons or soft places that you can press on this here box? Uh, I I do be feeling that there is a 
a squishy segment on this side. <laughs> squishy. I'm going to I'm going to continue pressing on it and see what happens. <laughs> All right, I'm going to need you to roll on agility. How how fast am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> No, how nimbly are you doing it? <laughs> okay. Rolling agility. Four. A four. I'm going to switch All right. dice. Your, uh... Captain Admiral Willie, I must <laughs> recommend that you do not simply aggressively poke at the squishy <laughs> section. I would recommend using a softer approach with a lighter touch. As take your time. As Pego is saying that, a needle ejects from the lockbox and stabs into the thumb that you are pressing rapidly on, piercing Arr! through the thumb, through the nail, and merging on the other side of the thumb. Arr! Arr! God damn it! Arr! Yeah. <laughs> and as if it wasn't even there to begin with, it extracts itself. And you can't even see where the needle came from. I guess that wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I, I I feel like I, um, be, because I think healing is part of loving, I think it stands to reason that Pego would be programmed to, like, immediately respond to any kind of, like, injury or distress. Okay, all so right. So I'm, I'm there in a second, and... Like, would I would I be able to perceive pretty quickly, like, what the problem is? Uh, yeah, I mean, without even uh, rolling it, you can see Admiral a very... Admiral Willie, what is the problem? <laughs> About the size of a hypodermic needle has been punched entirely through Whaleback Willie's thumb. I believe I was just tested for diabetes, son. <laughs> <laughs> Admiral Captain Willie, you have been injured. I am programmed with a healing salve. Please place your thumb into the healing hole and i like right where the kind of like facial features of the robot are because like there's visual sensors they're sort of like a, a pretty like mouth looking hole and it just like opens <laughs> this is how we Please used to do it in the navy <laughs> with and, uh, uh yeah if he puts his thumb into yeah. my like kind of face area hole i'm gonna attempt to use my you know like they say like dog spit is healing or whatever yeah. like yeah. It, yeah you have the equivalent of spit but it works as a bomb that just uh it it doesn't heal but it does stop the minor amount of bleeding that is coming from the wound it's just super glue basically <laughs> all right we'll open up that hole son <laughs> affirmative that feels good <laughs> was it good for you as it was for me the uh, ship lumbers on forward. You can feel it increasing speed to a point where it is very noticeable. Yar, I wonder, I do wonder what else there be on this ship. I'm going to think I might take a little explore and see um, if there's somewhere I can, I don't know, take a shit. <laughs> well, there was a bathroom. <laughs> no, no, somewhere else. I'm a, I'm a very private person. I can't shit in public washrooms. Bathrooms on these vessels are for art. They're not for shitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, as it stands, there's only one additional door in this part of the ship, and it's, you see it's labeled as a dining hall. Yeah, I, I go into the dining hall. Dining hall reveals... A fully housed room. There appears to be tables and chairs laid out for 50 to 75 crew members. It appeared that a banquet was in progress because you see each chair occupied by a bleached skeleton covered in rags and rotten robes. Are they human shaped skeletons? Every one of the uh, skeletons appears to be humanoid by the skull. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll up behind Helmut Keelstern here. All right. Edson McKeelstern, do you require assistance in sampling these skeletons? Sampling are yeah, I suppose. And I'm very confused because I immediately think like the samples you get at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, I guess you 
Y you you know robots you do what robots do, so I don't I I, I won't stop you. Yeah, I I don't think you'll be confused very long because what Pego does to sample things is go and like kind of like pick them up with the R two D two claw and place it into the the very same hole that it heals with because <laughs> there's some sensors there. So there's just sort of like a bone fragment sticking out of the face area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a multi-purpose hole. It's more of a cloaca. Just like all the holes, am I right? <laughs> you, upon your scanning of the bone, it is a normal human bone. It fits within a 99.875 percentage chance of being human. It is made of calcium, but you notice a thin, almost non-existent acidic layer over the bones, as if some sort of corrosive substance was poured over the entire body. Analysis complete. And then I proceed to explain everything you just said to them. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, robot, uh, Pego, <laughs> if you can sample things, do you think you could sample the ocean and see if it actually is blood? Because that is a mystery that I, the, the true mystery that I be trained to solve here. Acknowledge. And so I head over to the... So we came in basically via, like, a breach in our hull that managed to match up to a breach in their hull, if I understand you correctly? Yes. Okay, so... I believe... There are some fissure cracks all around it, though, that are dripping slight amounts of blood. And there isn't, like, stress on them from the movement of... Never mind. I don't want to... I don't want to drown us. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Are, and there's no, like, there's no windows or portholes or displays in either ship that we've come across that would, like, show us outside, or? For some reason, this ship that you've come across has not had a single glass window facing outwards. What about our ship? Yours could not handle the pressure of the dive if it had had glass windows. Okay, so we may or may not be still, like, we're moving. We might be moving through the blood, but we also might be above it. Like, we don't know. You don't know at the moment. But I. But if I go to, like, the breach area, there is still some dripping blood? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I what I do is I kind of, like, like, I crane my neck, the equivalent of a neck back, so that my <laughs> robot face faces up. And I allow the blood to drip into the sample hole. <laughs> it's given that blood is still dripping. I would make the estimation that we are still under blood. <laughs> the blood returns as blood. It is. It is certainly blood. But the DNA profile certainly blood does not match <laughs> anything that you've ever noticed uh, noted in your database. The DNA, DNA profiles matches unknown. nothing found in database. All right. Well, that's fucking gross. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. I'm way more grossed out now. Uh, I'm going My to continue. My apologies. I was not programmed <laughs> to perceive gross. <laughs> oh, that's good. I guess we wouldn't. Pego hasn't been programmed to yuck other people's yums. <laughs> um, Affirmative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna to continue to explore the dining hall. What else is in there? Wait, here, can I? Is there a kitchen? There is a kitchen, and attached to the kitchen appears to be another door leading into the other ship, parts of the ship, but it is completely and totally caved in. Oh, the doorway is caved mangled. in with like, with like rocks. No, <laughs> no, with steel girders and twisted steel. Okay, cool. You can see that the path looks almost non-navigable. Almost non-navigable, but maybe slightly navigable. That's what it's that's what it's saying. Okay, I'm going to try to navigate it. Navigate right. navigate. I'm going to need you to roll an agility. That's you. Big shoots. Okay, how are you at agility? I am normal at agility. Ooh. Oh, yeesh. <laughs> So, as you're attempting to climb over the rubble, 
you manage to punch your peg leg through one particularly weak section oh, of no. the caved in steel. And you hear a hissing sound. Uh oh. Blood starts gushing through the hole that you just punched. <laughs> oh no, yar. That he Detecting says. blood ingress once again. <laughs> Is everything okay, Ensign <laughs> McGillstern? Yeah, yeah, it's uh everything's everything's fine over here, fellas. Everything is super cool. Um I'm gonna try and jam my peg leg in there a little bit further. <laughs> Seal up the hole. I want you to roll So the hole that you made with your peg leg, you're just gonna hit it harder with your peg leg. Well yeah, because it's like my peg leg is tapered, so if I can like push it in there and maybe it'll like gum up around. Yeah? Yeah, like the the guy who had to put his finger in the dike uh, yeah. in the Netherlands. Josh, you can't use that word anymore. Okay, what's the God what are you making it. me roll? Uh, let's let's go with reaction. It is a reaction roll. Okay, I have speed. Oh no, never mind. I think that's a problem. We we don't want more speed here. If you have speed and you are not sharing, I am going to feel like you have been holding out. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, what, what, how much am I, what am I rolling? Normal at reaction. So just one set of dice. Okay. Well, I dropped the green one on the floor. So. Oh no. With be a nine. astonishing reflexes, <laughs> you jam your peg leg into the hole and you feel the pressure suck it in a little bit and wedge itself tightly. The blood stops pouring into the ship. Is that how pressure works? Yes. <laughs> if, something's, <laughs> if something's pushing in, it sucks it in down somehow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to argue. Okay, I'm going to twist off a vacuum my peg effect. Leg. Look up the science. It's, it's, You're it's the viscosity. It's the viscosity and all. That, that, <laughs> gotcha. That's what. Yeah, right. just ask ask Ryan. He'll back me up. Okay, I'll uh, I'll ask him later. Oh, should I bring him in for an expert witness? <laughs> yeah, we'll get our expert opinion here. Oh. Yeah, no. Um, so okay. as you do that, um, whale back. I need you to roll a quick little perception for me. Hey, the characters are on a first name basis with whale back Willie. I don't think you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you still have to call him Mister Willie. Mister yeah. Willie. Willie Mr. Junior. Back. Mr. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> whale backs back. Yeah, oh, Willie's right. a title. It's first name Whale, last name Back. <laughs> it's like it's like Esquire, but it's Willie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A six. A six. Crackling from the monitor, you hear a slight feminine voice. Time to destination. It's ninety-six hours. Ninety-six hours. It keeps beeping in five second intervals and then repeating, it's time to destination. Slowly but surely, the vessel glides through the blood. And that's where we're going to stop for today. It appears we have much time. Would you like me to suggest some activities <laughs> that will spend time? Looks like a hard no. <laughs> I'm kind and of with that I'm crushing emotional right disappointment, <laughs> that's where we leave our, our heroes. And there we are. You've continued your blood ocean adventures. All right. Kelly, where's the where's the music to play us out of the game? Oh, I don't, I don't even know anymore. It'll just, we'll just put, it, put in it in post. Oh, my God. <laughs> I guess we'll find out where those coordinates lie. 39.2645 degrees north and 26.2777 degrees east. It is... I can't read it. It's all in Greek. It's the <laughs> island of Lesbos. hey oh. Classic. Classic and classy. <laughs> Does anyone have anything that they would like to plug? I'm sure Tanner would have something to plug here. Indubitably. So we, we already did a lot of plugging on the show. We were plugging in coordinates. We were plugging holes with peg legs. So I'm going to plug my... Bon 
Under Punches is recorded primarily in a Miskwetsiwaskaikun in the traditional territory of the Nahiyuk, Nakoda, Nitsitapi, Nakawe, Metis, and other nations. Also known as Edmonton, Alberta, in Western Treaty 6 territory. They were presented this week by Nicole McCoy, Kelly Gomo, Tana Johnson, and Josh Hans. Various social media links for the show and its performers can be found in the episode description, but BUP lives primarily on Discord. Join the official server to discuss the show, vote on the titles of future episodes, and submit your own weird erotica. Our theme song is Mr. Wormsley's Addiction by MC Lars. Other Creative Commons licensed media is used sporadically and is attributed in the episode description. Thanks for listening, and happy trails to you. Too slow. D- okay. D- did the orchestra just play me off? It did. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Kelly, I feel, like, <laughs> I, feel like you can, I feel like you're only allowed to do that bit if you have a caption prepped with the person's, like, plugging thing <laughs> so well, that you can play I- that. Well, I mean, I put the I put people's like links and stuff in the descriptions and everything. I could put it on on the end. Yes, you should. It's your janties. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> I hate that word more than I hate the actual thing. Is, Is your friend alive? Underwear better. Nope, it's not. <laughs> Jundies. Um, where is your friend That's more alive? of a jong with how small it is. I don't know. I guess I'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> I was going to say a jean string. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you.